that's inevitable that humans would uh, project their hopes and fears upon the cosmos. The standard Hollywood attempts are to portray the extraterrestrials as uh, red of claw and fang, pointed heads and nasty dispositions. Spielberg has made an important step forward, E.T. and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, to show the possibility of benign extraterrestrials. But it, even there, the, the extraterrestrials are only slight variants on human beings when the evolutionary record is clear that extraterrestrials would be very different from us. And also, they're not awfully smart, his extraterrestrials. Sweet, but not smart. Sweet, but not smart. Yeah. If you look at time scales, you realize that our civilization is the most backward civilization in the galaxy that could communicate at all because we've just invented radio telescopes just a few decades ago. We had not the ghost of a chance of communicating with anybody else. So if we receive a message, it can't be from anybody less capable than we because anybody less capable can't communicate at all. So it has to be somebody much in advance of us and maybe as much in advance of us as we are in advance of the ants, say, or the worms. You, Carl Sagan, scientist, astronomer, enlightened man, you think that indeed there may be some sort of intelligence out there? May, surely, surely may. There's, we now realize, an enormous number of planets, a range of planetary systems around the nearby stars. So there's a lot of potential abodes for life. That's one thing. Then there's the question of organic matter, the carbon-rich complex molecules that are essential for the kind of life we know about are fantastically abundant. They litter the universe. We see them in asteroids and comets and the moons in the outer solar system and even in the cold, dark spaces between the stars. So the stuff of life is everywhere. And then there's time. There are billions of years for biological evolution on all those worlds. There are many worlds that are much older than ours. So you put those together, lots of places, lots of organic matter, lots of time, and it seems very hard to believe that uh, our paltry little planet is the only one that's inhabited. You know, the phrase you use about Earth people, us, we, are so benighted. The Earth is the ghetto of the universe. <laughs> We're the ghetto of the universe. Well, in, in an extremely backward and obscure part of uh, the Milky Way galaxy, we're 30,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. We're in the now, galactic boondocks. This whole galaxy is only one of probably hundreds of billions of other galaxies, a useful calibration of our place in the universe. There's also religion in science. There is a tendency in, uh, in both schools of thought to think that they have a corner in the truth. I mean, a way to look at it is the following. Science and religion on some level are after the same thing. Take uh, the question of our origins. Both science and religion attempt to approach this question. But the religions all contradict each other, so they can't all be right. The Judeo-Christian Islamic religion holds that uh, the world is about 6,000 years old. You just count up the baguettes in the Old Testament. It's very clear, 6,000 years old. The Hindus uh, have an infinitely old universe with an infinite number of creations and destructions of the whole universe. Now, those two major religions can both be right. How do you tell which is right and which is wrong? Well, the only way is to appeal to the natural world around us. And the natural world around us shows that the Earth, for example, is about 4.6 billion years old, nothing like 6,000 years old. So a literal reading of the Bible simply is mistaken. I mean, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. As a work of science, it is flawed. It's the science of the Babylonians in the 6th century BC, and we've learned something since then. This special episode of Blank on Blank is supported by Squarespace. Whether your story is out of the ordinary or simply out of this world, you should tell it in an unforgettable way. With user-friendly tools and templates, Squarespace helps you capture your story with a captivating website. Start your trial today. Visit squarespace.com forward slash blank on blank. Well, you quote Einstein, you know, the cosmic religious feeling. He is religious in that sense. 
is the strongest, noblest motive for scientific research. So there's a religion of sorts that Einstein believed in. Right, but it's, it's very yeah. different from yeah. uh, most people's uh, view of religion. Yeah. Einstein talked about God, but for Einstein, God was little more than the sum total of the laws of the universe. And there was no hint of intervention in daily life, of the efficacy of prayer, of life after death, or any of those accoutrements of the Judeo-Christian Islamic religion. This episode was also supported by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, enhancing public understanding of science, technology, and economic performance. More information on Sloan at sloan.org.